I got this really cool 8-bit dough mod kit in the mail. This is a DIY wireless controller PCB for an OEM N64 controller. Basically, it turns an OEM N64 controller into a Bluetooth wireless controller. I'm a big fan of wireless controllers that are as OEM looking as possible. This is the Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller, and I really like this because obviously it was made by Nintendo, but it looks exactly like a, an original N64 controller. And the cool thing about the Nintendo Switch Online and hopefully the 8-bit Doe wireless controller PCB is that both of these controllers should work with the Blue Retro adapters that I have. This is the Retro Time Blue Retro adapter for the N64. This allows you to use Bluetooth controllers with a real N64. So I'm just gonna install this 8-bit Doe PCB into one of my controllers and we can compare it to the NSO controller when using it with a Blue Retro adapter. Pretty minimal packaging, which is okay, in my opinion. Comes with instructions on how to install it. Comes with a USB Type-C cable, which is nice. So that means it's Type-C for charging the battery. Comes with this little tiny screwdriver. This is the PCB itself. And this, ooh, it's a nice black PCB, which is pretty cool. So this is the main PCB that goes inside of the controller. There's the battery on the back of this PCB. So that's where the battery for this unit is. It comes with an included replacement thumbstick. So this is what's called a GameCube style thumbstick as opposed to the normal N64 style thumbstick like the NSO controller has the N64 style thumbstick. This looks like the GameCube controller instead, but it's cool that they include a replacement joystick. And also this is, this is using a Hall effect sensor. So there shouldn't be any sort of drift or anything because this does not use potentiometers. And last but not least is the receiver. This actually plugs into the memory card slash rumble pack spot. And this is what is going to transmit the Bluetooth data to our Blue Retro adapter. This is also where the USB-C charging port is. So that's pretty cool. So it looks like it charges through the memory card slot, charges the battery through the memory card slot. There's a bunch of additional buttons here because this is also compatible with the Nintendo Switch. So it has some pairing buttons and things so you could use it with the Switch if you want to. Now this S slash D. Okay, so the little switch lets you change the input mode from compatible with the Nintendo Switch or D input. Okay, that's enough talking. Let's get this installed into an actual controller. This PCB is gonna go into my childhood Jungle Green N64 controller. I've actually had this controller taken apart for years now, probably, I don't know, 15 years or so. And I kinda just took it apart further and cleaned everything with soap and water. I'm not gonna go over how to disassemble everything, but you need to remember to remove the rubber membranes from the Z button, as well as the L and R buttons. That's pretty much everything you need from the old PCB. While we're here, somebody asked me if this new Hall Effect joystick might fit in an OEM controller. They should, I don't know electrically if they work, but they seem to be the same size and the connector is the same number of pins. So if you wanna buy this just to test it in your OEM GameCube controller, I'm not gonna do that, but it, it might work, I'm not sure. Actually, it looks like it wants to assemble everything in the top side of the controller. So we need to put all the buttons back in. Okay, that's all the buttons put back in. Looks like we may need to bend some of these contacts uh, like the original. It helps if you have the original controller nearby so you can kind of see how things are supposed to go in here. I sort of wish that this part was done for you already so you don't have to bend these because this doesn't really feel great. Let's attach the thumbstick here. It really only goes in one way. Okay. I'm gonna screw the controller in here. Okay, then the Z button contact gets pushed into here. Then the blue rubber piece. Uh, what? Okay, this part is pretty frustrating. I guess, and then I press this whole thing down. God, this blue thing won't stay in. 
Okay, okay, now I need to do the same thing with the L and R buttons. Just gotta find the right ones to go in the right side. And then that goes down. That part's really annoying, but I think I got it. Now I just need to put these in. I don't think there are any other screws that need to be connected to the actual PCB. So let's put these, the top part, and make sure you line up everything. Oh, I forgot one piece actually. Inside of the bag with the PCB is this little rubber stopper thing. That little rubber thing goes under the PCB. Now I should be able to line everything up here and put it on. Five minutes later. Uh, I'm having a hard time lining these pieces up together. Well, that's why this piece came out. Uh, okay, this. This little square here is probably saying don't put any wires there because that's where the hinge of the Z button is. Oh yeah, way better. Okay, I'm just testing all the buttons first before I secure everything up. So this this is the right button, R button, seems to work. The left bumper seems like something is stuck in it. Okay, getting this controller back together took a lot longer than I thought I was going to. I kept having trouble with a wire on either, I think it was the left, bumper here getting stuck in the plastic. But now all the screws are back together. So let's go ahead and plug in the receiver thing into the rumble pack slot. And that's pretty much the whole controller put together. Now before I start using the new controller, I figured I would do a feel test between the new Ipido controller, an OEM controller with decent stick, and it's not perfect, but it's decent, and the Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller. So let's get a feel for the original controller. Uh, okay, the face buttons. D-pad is a little mushy, mushier than I remember uh, on the original controller. And the L, L and R buttons are kind of mushy also. Okay, so I got a feel for the original. Let's do the Ape Do controller. So the L and R buttons are just as mushy, which I guess is a good thing. The D-pad is pretty much the same. Mushiness, I guess. I guess that's tr um, I guess that makes sense because I'm using the original uh, rubber membranes from an original controller. Same with the face buttons. So far, the D-pad, the face buttons, and the L and R buttons, and the Z button, I guess, feel about the same. An interesting thing to point out too while I'm here is take a look at the OEM controller gate. Okay, so it's not really, um, what is it, octagon? It's not a perfect octagon. The northeast, southeast, uh, southwest, and northwest are stretched out a little bit. Now compared to the Apido GameCube style, that is a more perfect octagon. This is sort of an issue that has plagued some GameCube controller replacement thumbsticks for the N64. The gates will not feel the same as an original controller. Okay, let's feel the Nintendo Switch Online controller. So I know the, the internals of the Nintendo Switch Online controller are not really the same. I know the thumbstick, um, I think maybe Rocker Gaming did a deep dive and the mechanism inside of the thumbstick is different, but it looks like the gate is similar as far as how this is going to feel when you move it. The D-pad, I think it feels worse. Yeah, I mean, not like the N64 D-pad feels good. I know, honestly, most games you don't really use the D-pad. The Nintendo Switch Online one, for some reason, feels worse. I do kind of like the L and R buttons about the same. I mean, they don't really feel any different. Same with the Z button. And the face buttons are the same too. So it's interesting to note that the 8-bit Do controller, the receiver, the Bluetooth receiver, it does stick out from the bottom of the controller, but not as deep as a rumble pack on an original controller. And then versus the Nintendo Switch Online controller, obviously the N Nintendo Switch Online controller does not stick out at all. Versus the 8 controller sticks out a little bit more. So a quick recap of the feel test. They don't really feel different as far as the face buttons, the D-pad and the L and R buttons, with the exception that the Nintendo Switch Online D-pad probably is the worst feeling. And we know that the gate is a different shape on the GameCube style 8-bit controller. Before we do any actual testing, let's talk about how to pair 
the controller with the blue retro adapter. To turn the controller on, we need to press the start button, and then you can see that there will be a blue LED flashing on the receiver here. If you want to turn the controller off, you have to hold the start button down until you don't see the light on anymore. Then the controller is off. So let's leave the controller off and turn on our N64. You can see that by default, the blue retro adapter will go into pairing mode. There's a screen flashing LED. That means it's looking for a controller. So now if we turn the controller on, in order to pair it with our blue retro adapter, we have to hold down this little radio wave button until the blue LED on the controller flashes really fast. Now the controller is in pairing mode. Sometimes the, I, I guess this doesn't mean the, the adapter is in pairing mode because it didn't automatically pair. I've had this issue a couple of times. Oh, never mind, it did pair. If you want to re-enable pairing mode on the blue retro adapter, you've got to hold down this button in the front here until the LED turns green and starts flashing. When the controller is actually paired, the blue LED on the receiver will turn a solid blue and the light on the blue retro adapter will turn off. This is pretty much the same process for pairing the Nintendo Switch Online controller. One thing that is kind of annoying, and this is probably a blue retro thing, not really a problem with the controller, is after the controller is successfully paired, if you turn the console off and back on again, the blue retro adapter will forget about the controller and you'll have to pair it all over again. The first test that we're gonna to do to compare these controllers is the controller test by Sani. So now it's gonna ask us to push the controller stick to different positions. So we're gonna press up and then A, and then just kind of repeat through all these pictures. The results of this test are going to be, I guess like the endpoints of the actual controller stick inputs. This first pass was with the stock N64 controller. Like I said, mine is a little bit loose. It's not 100% tight. So these results are not gonna be with a brand new OEM N64 controller. But what we could do with this testing tool is if we press A, it will show us some comparisons between a brand new original analog stick. These different test results are just kind of showing you what you might expect from different aftermarket sticks. So I think that this looks pretty good compared to this one here, which is what an original analog stick is supposed to look like. Okay, now let's do the same thing with the 8 replacement stick. This is sort of interesting. Now it says 84 for every position. But if we actually look at the picture, as you can see, the bottom left corner there looks like it might go out farther than a stock controller. I'll just cycle through to that picture. Yeah, actually a lot of the corners kind of go out to the corner, like the corners are further out on the 8 bit controller. I know this is kind of like the test to test an N64 stick. I don't necessarily know if this is realistic, like a realistic test. So we're gonna do some realistic tests, but let's just do this test one last time for the Nintendo Switch Online controller. Okay, I think the shape looks better. I mean, this shape looks better than the Ape Do controller. Although I had I had done the same test with the Ape Do controller. Actually, if you follow me on Twitter, you can see how the first time I did the Ape Do test, I got a much better result than the one I got when I was doing this recording. So this is the Nintendo Switch Online controller and it looks very similar to this original analog stick, maybe just a little bit wider. Like I said, I don't really trust these results that much. In my opinion, it will always come down to how it feels in games. Now it's time for what I'm going to call the real gamer test, which is basically to play an FPS game and real gamers play Perfect Dark and not GoldenEye. So the first test is with the OEM N64 controller. I'm gonna play the first level of Perfect Dark and I'm gonna get a feel for how a real N64 controller is supposed to handle. Oh man, it's been so long since I played an N64 FPS game. Still got it. What the hell? Ooh, that inverted control. Okay, so I think one important thing to point out is that I can kind of aim pretty decently i mean this is on the easiest difficulty but i can aim pretty decently without having to do the uh crosshair aim so i'm just kind of strafing around obviously auto aim is on and stuff but i don't really have to think about how i'm aiming with this controller compared to modern games i mean this is still not super enjoyable not really that that's not really part of this test but 
Yeah, I guess it's important to get a benchmark. Jeez, there's a lot of these guys. <laughs> Rip. Okay, fine. I can't beat this level. I don't remember how to do it. Okay, now I'm going to repeat the same test, basically get to the same spot in the level. This time I'm going to be using the 8 bit toe controller. Definitely noticed that the outside edge of the controller is much more sensitive. Like when I try to look around, it is very hard to aim at these guys. Versus with the OEM, like did you see there, it was like super sensitive. Like I could cha change direction very quickly, which is not particularly good, which is not particularly good for a game like this where I don't know. It's kind of more fun if you're. It's a little more run and gun, without having to aim. I guess it would probably take some getting used to. Like I'm trying to play towards the center of the stick now, instead of doing, um, instead of going all the way to the edge of the throw of the controller, which is very kind of goofy. It takes a lot of getting used to. It probably doesn't help that I have auto aim on. But if you're a casual gamer, you're probably not going to not turn auto-aim on. There's someone here. It's even it's even worse if you try to use it with the crosshairs. I should have played it on harder difficulty. I suppose it's better if you're trying to turn around really quickly. It's pretty nice to be able to turn quickly around, but I'm actively thinking about how I'm aiming the stick, which, I don't know, like I said, it's probably just, you have to get used to it if you really wanted to play the, an FPS with this controller. Yeah, if you're trying to watch this, you might be getting a little, like, I don't know, seasick? Because it just whips around very quickly. Yeah, no, I think I've had enough. I don't think this is the controller or the kit for you if you're specifically looking to play FPS games like GoldenEye or Perfect Dark. Okay, just for haha's, I'm gonna be using the Nintendo Switch Online controller now. So this test is also Blue Retro, but with the Nintendo Switch Online controller. I do kind of feel like this is better than the Blue Retro GameCube style stick. Uh, I think it might have to do with how tall the thumbstick is. Uh, it's it's very similar to the, obviously it, it's basically a replica of the OEM stick. Um, so maybe that has effect is affecting my muscle memory more versus trying to learn a whole new way of playing these games. I don't think it's perfect. I mean, I, I don't see myself whipping around like I was with the, uh, well, as much. I do notice it a little bit, but I don't think it's as bad as the uh, GameCube style stick. I am John Wick. Obviously these tests are not scientific. I'm just going by my muscle memory. I did play a lot of Perfect Dark when I was young. I mean, it's been a long time since I have played it, but um, obviously it does, obviously that does come into play a little bit. I'm familiar with this game, how it kind of should feel. With that being said, I do feel like an OEM controller is the best way to play FPS games, but let's take a look at a different game that's not an FPS. The last test that I'm going to do is a Super Mario walking test, or if I can get Mario to just kind of tiptoe around. Here, I'll just show you with the OEM N64 controller. If you move the stick just a little bit, Mario kind of tiptoes a little bit. And I'm just gonna kind of do that in every direction to see how difficult it is to maintain this tiptoeing. 
This is not a, a perfect N64 controller. Um, it's not super tight or anything, but you know, it's doable. I do have to try a little bit. The resistance on the thumbstick, there is a little bit of springiness, but I, I do kind of have to focus to get uh, it's not like it's super hard, but I have to focus. And, and it also is direction dependent as well. I think that might have to do with the fact that my stick, my OEM stick is not perfect. But, you know, I could tiptoe, tiptoe around 360, I guess, without breaking the tiptoe. But with an OEM controller specifically, it's about finding the dead zone, like, getting right outside of the dead zone where the, the stick does nothing and then finding a good pressure um, to get Mario to tiptoe. It's not comfortable. Uh, I don't really, I guess I have to kind of try to do this. All right, that's enough tiptoeing. Let's just do some running around here. Um, run through the castle maybe. Let's just do a simple level. How about the first one? Yeah, I've got no problems controlling Mario. Ah, this guy. Don't eat me. the edge. That's lame. Oh man, I'm having a hard time with the controller against this guy. Wow, he he's talking about fighting me with honor, and then he goes ahead and throws me off the edge. Yeah, bob -omb. Come on. Okay. That's enough. Obviously with an OEM controller, I have no problem playing Super Mario. Okay, now for the 8-bit Doe controller, let's try to do the tiptoe test. Hmm. I would say that the tiptoe test is a lot harder. Uh, the range that I can do the tiptoe is very narrow and the actual GameCube style thumbstick doesn't have as much tension as an OEM controller does. So there's just a little tiny window that I have to do the crawl. Let's see if I can try real hard. That That's really hard. Um, Really hard to do the tiptoe test. But, I mean, other than that, it feels fine to play. Let's do that first mission again. I do feel like the directional input is more... Well, that was just a skill issue. I do feel like the directional input is more... Uh, there's, like, less range. Um, like, there's less... Gosh, I did it again. Maybe it's not a skill issue. Like, Mario doesn't move fluidly, I guess, if that makes any sense. Like, I can't have, I can't get Mario to go in between these angles. He's kind of locked in. And then that might have to do with the gate. That might have to do with the shape of the gate kind of preventing me from going all the way into the middle of one of those angles. 
But it is sort of choppy. And I don't really like that. Okay, I'm not having a hard time here. Well, I did it. I got my bomb. Okay, let's try the same test with the Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller. So let's do the tiptoe test. Oh yeah, this is like the easiest controller of the three. Even better than the original controller to do the tiptoe test. Uh, still, I have to watch the pressure, but the it, this controller is not worn in as badly as my OEM controller is. So I have more of the controller dead zone or, or whatever, the stick. There's less play in the center. So, and it seems to pick up almost immediately when I start moving in direction. So let's go, and I don't notice that, um, I don't notice that hard angular movement, I guess. Like, I'm not locked into 45 degree angles. I can move a little bit more fluidly. Let's just do the first map here. Yeah, honestly, for this game, the Nintendo Switch Online controller is the best controller that I have. It's better than the OEM controller that I have that's worn in a little bit. It's infinitely better than the GameCube style stick from Apido. Yeah, at least for this specific game. Not to say that the Apido controller is a bad controller. Uh, obviously, there's kind of two aspects to that controller. There's the wireless functionality, and then there's the Hall Effect game, uh, GameCube style stick. So it's not really fair to say that it's the 8-bit controller. And I don't know if it's really Blue Retro. Blue Retro has been pretty good, right? Because the Nintendo Switch Online controller also uses Blue Retro. Okay, so ironically in the Mario, the Super Mario test, the Nintendo Switch Online controller is probably the best controller of the three. I've been doing these tests for a couple of days now and I've been posting some teasers on Twitter and by far the number one commented thing is how does the 8 PCB work with an OEM N64 stick? I went through my controller collection and I ended up finding a pretty decent stock N64 stick. There's no aftermarket parts or it's not lubed or anything. I just wanna see how this stick performs with the 8 PCB. Okay, out with the GameCube style stick and in with the OEM style stick in the 8 PCB. There it is, we have a stock thumbstick with the 8 PCB. I'm gonna repeat all the tests that I did with the 8 PCB with the GameCube style stick with the stock stick instead. So first let's do the controller test benchmark. Whoa, look at that. See, even the stock stick can have a pretty weird result in this benchmark test. Okay, now it's time for the Perfect Dark test. Now that I'm playing this with the OEM stick and the 8 PCB, it seems kind of similar to the Nintendo Switch Online controller. I don't know if that's uh, the nature of just Blue Retro. Maybe there's something up with Blue Retro making the input more sensitive. It is a little bit sensitive, or at least I'm noticing it may be sensitive, or it could just be this stock stick is different than the stock controller that I was using before. I still don't really have to think about how I'm aiming. I can kind of just walk around and not really have to use the uh, targeting thing. The more that I'm playing with this though, the more that I'm realizing that I probably can't tell the difference between this and the Nintendo Switch Online controller. And if I'm being honest now, playing with this, it could just be the nature of Blue Retro. Maybe there's some Blue Retro. The Blue Retro adapter maybe needs to be, I don't know, tweaked a little bit so that the sensitivity is more like a stock controller. I also figured out how to beat the first mission here in Perfect Dark. Okay, let's do the tiptoe test here in Mario 64. Yeah, it's about the same as the Nintendo Switch Online controller if I'm being honest. That makes me wonder if the other stock controller was just too worn in and it was a little bit more difficult. This is a little bit difficult. I mean, I don't really think people are gonna be tiptoeing around like this a lot in this game, but it definitely seems like there's a lot more range in this stock stick compared with the GameCube style stick. And I don't have the same issue with Mario not being able to run, basically being locked into that 45 degree angle. This seems a lot more like the Nintendo Switch Online controller and a stock stick, at least for this game. Not having any problems with the bridge. 
Yeah, and no problems with the Mario test. Okay, here's the bottom line. In my unprofessional opinion, if you are a Super Smash Brothers player or an FPS player, I don't think you're really ever going to be a stock wired um, N64 controller. If you want the best possible performance, then the stock N64 controller is probably the best for you. If you're a casual N64 enjoyer, I don't think you can go wrong with either the Nintendo Switch Online controller or the 8-bit Do controller with a stock thumbstick in it. With both the NSO controller and the 8-bit Do PCB, you are going to need a blue retro receiver. It doesn't have to be the retro time receiver. That's just the ones that I use and I, I really like them because they're very small form factor and they seem to work pretty well with the, all the tests that I did. But obviously you could build your own blue retro adapter because it's open source. I actually have a video about how to do that up in the top over here. But yeah, for my purposes, I don't really have a use for this GameCube Hall Effect controller. I mean, I think it's a really cool idea to use Hall Effect sensors inside of here so you don't have to worry about anything like stick drift, but it doesn't feel like the stock controller out of the box. Maybe there's a way to mess around in the Blue Retro firmware or something to make this um, feel, I guess, in software because it's never going to feel like uh, the normal gates in the stock controller. The gate in this is not going to feel the same. But yeah, out of the box, I didn't really find this that enjoyable. Cost-wise, the Nintendo Switch Online controller is $50, plus you have to buy um, Nintendo Switch Online, obviously, so that's a cost that you have to factor in when buying this controller versus the just the PCB alone for the 8-bit Do um, kit is $30, but with the GameCube thumbstick, which you probably shouldn't really buy unless you really want one, is $40. So price-wise, the 8-bit Do controller is still cheaper. Both of these, you'll need a uh, the receiver, which is extra money. But yeah, the 8-bit Do PCB kind of wins in the cost regard. That's assuming that you have a good stock controller at your disposal. If you don't, then the Nintendo Switch Online controller is kind of where it's at. I also wanted to mention that because 8 created this PCB, I think we're going to enter into a, uh, a whole new world of N64 controller customization. Having a replacement stock PCB that allows you to use everything that already exists in the third-party community and it being a wireless form factor, this is like the barrier to entry for me. Having, it, having a controller wireless is first, and second, it needs to look stock. So taking this fantastic jungle green controller and making it wireless, that's, that's mind blowing for a lot of people. Thanks for watching this quick video. Get subscribed if you like console modding videos and I'll see you in the next video.